Well, I've certainly ruffled a few feathers and upset a few people, but uh, I'm off that now. I'm, uh, I've done a video uh, narrating Jane Roberts' introduction to a book, and um, I'm going to upload it and uh, ask for people's input. I've never narrated a book before, I played it back, it sounded a little bit uh, um, incoherent to me. Um, too much coming out at once and I didn't say it very well. Well, I don't think I did. Um, so yeah, I'm just putting out this video now and to ask people that when I put out the narration of uh, the introduction, uh, give me feedback. Am I cramming too much in? Am I um, being too expressionless, not not, or expressing too much, or uh, you know, um, any critique is uh, welcomed because I'm not making it for me to listen to. I'm trying to get across something that Jane Roberts has said that I find valuable information. So um, ultimately. I looked out there everywhere for MP3s or anybody else that had narrated it and like so many things that you come across it's like damn I'm gonna have to do it myself and uh, I do think that a lot of the information that she's given out in uh, several of her books is really pertinent to what people are going through now especially the um, ones where she talks about mass consciousness and uh, viruses, she even talks about viruses in um, one book. I mean there are a lot of things in there that you could could have sworn that this knowledge was being produced to deal with this time and uh, it was. <laughs> it was being produced for this time but it was wisdom that came through quite a few decades ago to give enough people enough time to understand and bring this information forward into their own lives so that when 2020 has happened that um, there are some of us that aren't going to be scattered or you know the, the usual trolls that think that they can leave these comments that you're going to behave like they do and people ask me why do I respond to these comments I should just ignore them well, if someone was talking to me, I wouldn't ignore them, no matter whether they were being positive or negative to me. You know, I just don't ignore people like that. And besides, you know, if you want to give me an earful, I can well and truly speak for myself. What, you think that you can just dish it out and not take it? Well, sorry. You know, I've, I will speak up if I... If I find it amusing, I've got quite uh, a lot of sarcasm if people haven't figured that out. But I think as you get older, that's a way of dealing with, um, well, the way the world is. It's not as simple as these two birds in the trees, is it? And that's an interesting thing too, is that I'll get sidetracked here, as I usually do. That uh, over three states I'd been photographing what I thought were crows until I realized that not one of them were crows but ravens because I was wondering where are the, where are the birds that I used to see I know that I used to see them when I was a kid on the farm up, up my cousin's farm the crows their beady eyes they were dark brownish orangey color you don't see crows anymore. You see these these light blue eyed birds are actually ravens. That's the difference between a crow and a raven is the colour of the eyes pretty much. So that's a little tit bit of handy information if you didn't know it. But uh, the reason that I've got this video is because uh, of a night time when I was doing my night photography I'd be exploring light in that aspect and during the day I'd be exploring light as well. But uh, especially birds because um, I was under a chemtrail path and trying to photograph the chemtrail planes was quite a challenge. 
So to get in practice to video moving objects, there's no better object than a bird. And uh, besides, it's actually quite interesting to just observe them when they feel safe. Like up in this tree, these two. You know, it, it's, it's nature at its best. So um, I am going to do a few other narrations, but I'd like to take on board people's um, observations and comments about the one I'm about to upload. I was going to do it again, and then I thought, no, I'll just put it out there and see um, whether other people like the way it's been produced or not like it or you know prefer that it was shorter or I said it slower or if I didn't bother with it at all uh, because um, I do have if you haven't picked it up in my speech already I did have surgery on my face a couple of years ago and it is difficult for me to form some words and try and finish them off sometimes because well I'm for the last you know over 50 odd years of my life I've been used to talking and once they scarred my face and tightened it all up over my mouth and it's numbed it there too that uh, it, it doesn't go quite where I want it to and so I don't form the words the way I want to so it does sound like I do uh, stutter and and a lisp a bit too because yeah that's part of it so as I said any feedback on what I put up on how people would like to hear it or not hear it uh, there are PDFs of it I've uploaded that to my 2020 vision freedom at archive org and uh, you can read them for yourself and quite frankly it might be better if you did read it for yourself because uh, when I read a book in my head it sounds so different to hearing myself narrate it outwardly and that's probably why um, I don't like the narration very much but if it's what other people um, can listen to and get something out of yeah I'm quite happy to stumble along with my odd little errors in there I trip over words I'm not a robot, I'm a human being, you know. <laughs> I make mistakes even when I'm trying to spit out the words. And uh, even in the introduction, in what I'm saying, that is, the reason is in what uh, Jane was saying in that introduction, is that the, what goes on inside the inner uh, thought processes and consciousness and everything is hard to bring out into the facts and figures world and express it in language especially if there's no words for it or concept for it I mean the new age era has made it wonderful because they've introduced so many concepts that you can actually refer to now rather than try and explain yourself because seriously if I had to explain a lot of these concepts well as I've said in a in previous videos there's a reason I use other people's videos because why repeat something that's been said if someone else is saying it better so I'll put forward someone else's opinion and funnily enough AG um, that my little stalker comments he um, said to me about why don't I upload original content and I'm presenting um, other people's work like it's some insult it's like I don't look at it as an insult to to present other people's work and opinions I consider it sharing valuable information it's not a matter of ego that I have to produce it and give it to people it's not that so yeah you can't see the comment on there because as I explained in the have a laugh one that he deletes them and he's not worth the time he did have to have the last say I did leave a comment and I knew he'd have to come back with something and he did but it's not worth making a video out of uh, because I've already had a laugh at him <laughs> I'm still having a laugh at him but um, yeah anyway 
So I better get off this um, positiveness and get back onto the negativeness that I've been accused of. Anyway, so um, Jane Roberts is um, putting forward a lot of concepts and she explains them in a lot of ways better than what I can. So um, I'm going to narrate her work because uh, what I could read that she's written, well, what ended up written in a book, I guarantee you that has had at least probably 20 drafts screwed up and rewritten and done so many different ways and times until it came down to the core message. So in other words, she shrunk about 20 hours of umming and ahhing down into something that I could read in 20 minutes. So it's that kind of thing for me as far as what I can't present it in a simple manner in a lot of respects. I can tell you of my own experiences, but uh, I am by no means the source of all information. I mean, what vanity to actually think that I possess all that knowledge, and why shouldn't I share other people's knowledge? I don't have a license on knowledge, and in sharing other people's knowledge, it doesn't negate my own. I mean, seriously, people have got to start um, giving up ownership of knowledge and all this ego stuff that's involved with it. You know, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. I guarantee you these birds aren't worried about that kind of crap. In fact, they're just as likely to crap on your head if you're not careful. Anyway, I'm going to leave you with the... Um, the lorikeets and uh, up in the background there there's a um, raven this was in my backyard in a small town Corralbin that in itself is going to be a series of videos this is one of the strangest towns I lived in and the place where I was living at here was I lived there for nearly three years before I moved over the other side of the bridge into Corralbin into another area and that's when the strangeness really ramped up. They have 24-7 security at this place and at the time I was here the resort was bankrupt, couldn't pay any of its bills yet it had at least three security, full-time security and live-in uh, that would cost annually hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars which nobody could pay for and that was just one of the mysteries. We've got uh, Coptic monasteries, we've got um, a biosecurity um, facility, we've got a mysterious horse deaths, strange kangaroo behaviour, and the resort itself. Well, that is strangeness. Very big strangeness. Anyway, as I said, that's another story. I got sidetracked again. Then again, that's what happens in a thinking mind. <laughs> you don't stay in the one drone spot. And sometimes I just voice what's going through my head rather than perhaps what other people might be interested in or maybe what I should say. But then again, I've never been politically correct. I've always been upfront and honest. My family used to cringe when they'd see me coming for Christmas dinner. It's like, oh no, what's Kerry going to say? They just don't know what honesty I'm going to confront them with. Because I don't take shit from no one. I've got my own set of values that have grown considerably and evolved over the years. But I'm not going to let someone that has not understood certain levels of information try and bring me down and tell me to go backwards. And that's the way I look at it. It's not that I know more than you, it's just that I've already discovered certain things and moved beyond that. And I do not want to go back to that stage of it. And it, you know, it's going forward, not backwards. So, yes, I'll leave you with these nice fluffy, um, oh, can't even think, oh, wattles. No. That time of the year when it, it flowers. All you can hear are the squawking of the lorikeets during the day 
and the bats come in of the night time. I did video the bats. They're a lot harder to video because uh, they actually bounce off um, the infrared beam that shoots out on my uh, video camera of the night time will help to pick things up that the visual eye can't see but it didn't help with the um, the bats so yes yeah, so all of most of this footage I got over years was because not only my curiosity about what was in the sky but also taking time to appreciate nature anyway I'm going to leave it at that and as I said if you can give me some feedback on the um, the introduction from Jane Roberts and just let me know if uh, yeah as I said before anyway take it easy and I'll catch you next time